One of the most requested versus scenarios that come into my inbox is that of the Terran Empire versus the United Federation of Planets. This can be a difficult one because, quite frankly, Berman destroyed the Terran Empire. And I don't mean from a story aspect, he just ruined the whole concept. And yeah, it was Berman. You don't like me, do you, Smiley? Not really, Mr. Sisko. <laughs> ah, you're not afraid to show it, are you? I suppose that's why I like you so much. Stay mad. But I'll do my best to bring everything together. So there are a few things that we'll have to accept. Thanks to Deep Space Nine, we won't be looking at a war between the Terran Empire and Starfleet in the 24th century. We'll be looking at it in the 23rd. From everything I've observed, the Terran Empire has technology that is either on par or superior to that of Starfleet at this point. Report on technology. Mostly variations in instrumentation. Nothing I can't handle. How and why it's only on par or slightly superior is interesting because we know that in the 22nd century, the Empire received the Defiant, but we'll say that they weren't able to massively advance due to the inherent crippling that infighting causes. And as we know, the Terran Empire is rife with treason. The vessels would also be similar in aesthetic. Thanks to Discovery, we also have a way for this war to occur in canon. From everything that is discernible, the Spore Drive not only has the ability to traverse space, but realities. So it's possible to jump from one reality to the other, from one universe to another universe. That said, this is where theorizing will have to occur, I'm afraid. For the purposes of the conversation, everything up to the destruction of the Emperor's ship has occurred. It will be this singular event that causes the Terran Empire Federation War, or Imperial Wars. Fire Mr. Reese. Aye, sir. <laughs> After it is assumed that the Emperor is killed with the bulk of her forces, as well as Lorca and his rebels, the Terran Empire is briefly thrown into chaos. The Imperial government, on a good day, would have military coups and deaths, even at the Admiralty level, on a weekly basis. So such a power vacuum would cause untold amounts of pain. In the final equation, a strong leader rises up within the Empire and seizes control back. In order for everyone to follow this new world order and ensure the pseudo-civil war doesn't continue, a common enemy is conceived. The new emperor, whether they be a rightful heir to the throne as a son or daughter of Hoshisato, or they're an imposter playing at kingdom building, would proclaim all of the bloodshed and internal strife was because of a specific reality. The Emperor, or Lorca, depending on which side they're going to say was the good guys, wasn't killed by anyone in the Terran Empire, but by Starfleet in the Prime Universe. These cowards would come into the Mirror Universe and want to bring their diversity. They would want to weaken all of humanity. The rally call would be to stop this, to invade the Prime Universe and bring the Xeno lovers to quote unquote, justice. As stated, the technology to invade the Prime Universe already existed, so the Spore Drive, as mentioned before, would be able to transport as many ships and troops as they needed from their universe to the other. So with that in mind, the engineers of the Empire begin to mass-produce the technology and retrofit their vessels to allow them to cross the threshold. Now this brings up the question of where exactly would the Empire attack? While hitting one of the original member worlds would send a stark message, it also had a chance of ending very poorly for the Empire. Again, the original series Starfleet is no joke. The Terrans needed time to bring their forces to bear. Also, staying in the shadows is... not the style of the Empire. They aren't going to appear somewhere innocuous and attempt to rot Starfleet from within. However, even with all of that, a show of strength is necessary. The subjugation, or perhaps genocide, of an alien species would send a message and not jeopardize the entire operation. In this assault, the First Strike Armada would be... The Romulan commander is signaling, sir. I'll put it on the screen. The Cation homeworld. I assume the initial fleet would involve Terran Empire Constitution class vessels supported by Miranda class. These initial strikes would overwhelm the defenses of the Cations. While I can't say exactly what they would decide to do, I could definitely see the new Emperor, and all of the Terrans really, removing at least half of the population to prove a point. 
that would send shockwaves across the galaxy. Unfortunately, while we are dealing with the 23rd Century Federation, they are still... the Federation. Ambassadors are dispatched to come to a peace agreement, and really this is just extra time for the Empire. Negotiations would ultimately break down as Imperial forces create a beachhead on the Cation homeworld, building stations and shipyards, all the while receiving more and more reinforcements from the other side. In the end, they begin to push out. On the topic of vessels, let's analyze ship maintenance for a moment. You don't want to end up like me, do you? I've absorbed enough Delta Rays to guarantee my grandchildren glow in the dark. They say for every year you spend next to one of these things, you lose a decade off your life expectancy. As stated, Imperial vessels are more powerful than their counterparts. This would come at a cost, though. We know that the Empire does seemingly look at their soldiers as a resource, and thus depletion rates are more acceptable for them. Because of that, Imperial vessels are likely more toxic and hazardous than Starfleet vessels. This is important because not only are they attempting to invade an area, but they have a natural loss of individuals, even if they're not in a fight. This could also mean that ships are more susceptible to specific kinds of attacks. After all, what is the Federation, if not a scientific monolith that uses science to make the scariest vessels that can be fathomed? On that note, while the Terran Empire would have an initial advantage given the spore drive, Starfleet would likely quickly unclassify the information and begin retrofitting their own ships. So the first few months will be Starfleet at a disadvantage, but that would be quickly neutralized. At this point, I'm not comfortable completely saying how a war would go, though I may try to break that down at a later time. For right now, I think that the Federation would probably retreat to an inner circle, making it harder for spore drive attacks to be effective. They would then begin to push back in a counterattack, advancing in technology faster than the Empire ever could. Additionally, other governments like the Romulans and Klingons may take advantage and help form a coalition in order to destroy the Terrans. Though, I could see both the Romulans and Klingons not ceding any ground won during the war even if originally those planets belonged to the Federation. Ultimately, I believe the Empire would lose, but in the end, the Federation would as well. Starfleet would be far more weakened in an opportunistic Romulan star and warmongering Klingon Empire would be able to gain significant land and political capital. Again, I may one day take the time to create an entire scenario, but I'm curious, how do you think these Imperial Wars would go? Give me your detailed thoughts on how you would write the war in the comments below. And remember, in the end, all of our lives are a story. Make yours a good one.